great experience uh, working with amazing actors and, of course, our amazing director, Sue Blue. Uh, and what's amazing and wonderful is that even after over 20, 25, 20, 25 years or 20? Oh, it's more than that. Uh, we met on... Uh, we no, met that we started... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that was, uh, the, the movie was called Higher Ground. And it was John Reese Davies and, uh, and uh, Was it Richard Mazur? No. Richard, Richard Mazur? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, uh, Michael Van and Michael Van Heeren and Burr. That's where we first met. Yeah. So that's, uh, I'm sorry to say. A lot. <laughs> it was 34 years <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Anyway, um, I, I know that you're, you're this, I, I don't know what I can say to you except, uh, uh, is there any questions that you may have? Yes, there's a question going up. Oh, okay. Of course, the box goes up. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. This is the voice, the panel thing. Okay, uh, I can do this over style, which means you do not touch my microphone at all and you keep your mask on. Sorry, that's too good. Keep your hand on. I will do my darkest to try to get to you. I'm going to start from the back and work my way forward.
they narrowed it down and narrowed it down and narrowed it down to the final cast. And I think the final cast is pretty hard to have it. One day, 
become the head of these boys. <laughs> Perfect sound quality. 
But when you hear it on a tape recording, you think it sounds kind of thin or reedy or whatever it is. But to other people listening to your voice, to them, it sounds like what it sounds like in your head. And you never get used to it because it's giving a true representation, but it will never, it will never uh, uh, copy the, the voice that's inside your head. So you may think it's in a reading, but it's not. It's how other people hear it. Like, I cannot stand the sound of my own singing voice. <laughs> I listen to myself singing and I go, oh, I say, stop doing that. <laughs> but people keep saying, oh, no, you have a great singing voice. You're right, you have a fabulous singing voice. And I'm like, how can you say that? It's not like crap to me. But that's the way it is. That it takes a long time to get back that sort of self criticism because you know what's going inside, what's going on inside your head when you say those lines, you know. So you can go, like on TV especially, you watch it up and go, oh, lie, lie, lie. Oh, that was, I believe that, lie. Thankfully, these days, now and everything, when I watch my shows, I go, great, I'm telling you.
you know, it's, it's, uh, that's what's gratifying in the work that we do and for the characters that we, that we portray. What she said. <laughs> icons ever, Optimus Primal and Optimus Prime himself. Now, did you feel at all scared or discouraged when you took up the mantle of Optimus Prime over Peter Cullen for Transformers Armada? Involved or you know, uh, 
let's say, attached to it, anything beyond, beyond uh, the professional one, I could be, you know, a lot of trouble. You know, <laughs> I could, you know, be, be making great scenes on media. I don't do that. I just, I just enjoy what I do, and if I can do it for a moment, I can. That's all that matters to me. Well, thank you so much, sir. And you You're did a welcome. wonderful job as Optimus Prime. Thank you so much. <laughs>
It's okay, we're going into the ballroom now. If we go to a ballroom like this, and there were a few thousand people in this room, this huge room, and he brought me over to this table, and the table with girls sitting over here. I don't know if you ever saw Galaxy Quest. Yeah. 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 He walked into the, 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 the convention, and all the girls were sitting there, This guy walked over and he said, ladies and gentlemen, this is Optimus uh, Prime. And they all went, eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
So you have to you have to endow that character with a, a different sensibility, and uh, it's just like with any human. I mean, there's you know Hannibal, and there's you know uh, Father Christmas. <laughs>
we did a show called Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah! Yeah! It was, it was uh, uh, a grounder and a scratch. Scratch and grounder. Well, Phil played grounder and I played scratch. We recorded six shows and Marcia Goodman, who was running the show at the time, came to us one morning and said, we don't like the voice Come up with something brilliant right now. We're fired. <laughs> Those were her exact words. Come up with something brilliant right now. We're fired. And we came up, we had a, like an Abbott Costello thing going, hey, you know that? Hey, Scott, you know. And uh, nothing was working. They hated it. They hated it. They hated it. And so I was flipping around and I said, hey, And that's why I go, what oh, is like his lovely head for a moment? You know? And Scratch goes, oh, 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 And uh, they, they took it back to, uh, to Hanbro, and Hanbro said, we love it. Thank you. <laughs> and that's how we, we got the voices. Then we had to re-record six episodes, so it has happened. Favorite episode of the 